In this topic, we're going to have a look at osmosis and water potential. So by the end of this topic, you should be able to answer the questions, what is osmosis? What does hypertonic, hypotonic, and isotonic mean? What is water potential? And what's the equation for water potential? So just to recap, all cells are surrounded by a partially permeable membrane that controls what substances can enter and exit a cell. So there are several methods by which molecules and ions can cross the cell membrane. We've looked at diffusion in the last topic. Today we're going to look at osmosis. Then there's also active transport and bulk transport. So as you know, diffusion is the net movement of particles from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration down their concentration gradient. So osmosis is a special form of diffusion, but only involving water molecules. Now there are some terms that we're going to come across that you need to be familiar with. These include solute, solvent, hypotonic, hypertonic, isotonic, water potential, pressure potential, and solute potential. So it's a good idea to copy down these different words on separate pieces of paper and then write the definitions on the back as we go along so you can use them as flashcards. So what's the difference between solute and solvent? Well here you've got a solution of glucose in water. So if you zoom in you can see the glucose in pink and the water represented by the red and white dots. Which one is the solute and which one's the solvent? The solute is the glucose. So a solute is any substance, such as glucose, that's dissolved in a, in a solvent, for example, water. So the solute is represented by the pink and the solvent is represented by the red and white dots. Now you need to understand the definition of hypertonic, hypotonic and isotonic because we need these terms to define osmosis. So looking at this diagram, you've got a hypotonic solution and a hypertonic solution. And I want you to look at the yellow particles. Which side, the left or right, has got more yellow particles? The right side. Now these yellow particles represent solute. So we say that a hypertonic solution has got more solute and less water. So it's concentrated. Now what do I mean by this? Well, if you pour um, 20 milliliters of juice into a glass and then you only add 10 milliliters of water, your solution is going to be quite concentrated. If you take another 20 milliliters of juice and you add 50 milliliters of water, that solution is now going to be dilute. So the solution where you have got lots of solute, so lots of juice compared to water, that is hypertonic. The solution where you've got fewer solute particles compared to the volume of water, that is hypotonic. So hyper is more solute, hypo less solute. And then isotonic would be if you have two glasses of juice and water and they are equal concentrations. So looking at this diagram, where do you think the water is going to move from hypotonic solution to hypertonic or the other way around? So the water is going to move to where there's more solute particles. So it's going to move from hypotonic solution to hypertonic solution, the net movement of water. So keeping this in mind, what is the definition of osmosis? Osmosis is the net movement of water molecules from a hypotonic solution to a hypertonic solution across a partially permeable membrane. The terms high water potential and low water potential we'll have a look at in a moment. So keeping this in mind, you've got a capillary tube with different solutions on either side of a partially permeable membrane. Now this partially permeable membrane will only let water across, it won't let the solutes across. So which way is water going to move? Is it going to move from a hypotonic solution to a hypertonic solution or the other way around? So remember that the water is going to move towards where there's more solute particles. So the water is going to move from a hypotonic solution to a hypertonic solution. 
So what do you think is going to happen to the water levels on either side of this capillary? The water level on the right is going to rise and the water level on the left is going to fall. So as I've already mentioned, a partially permeable membrane only lets water and very small molecules through. So in this case, it won't let the glucose molecules through. So it results in an uneven distribution across the membrane. So if you've got two solutions here and the partially permeable membrane in between, which side is hypotonic and which side is hypertonic? Looking at the number of pink glucose molecules. The side on the left is hypotonic, so we say it's got a high water potential. And the side on the right is hypertonic, so it's got a low water potential. So which way is water going to move? It's going to move from the left to the right, from a hypotonic solution to a hypertonic solution. Okay, so your osmotic concentration relates to the number of dissolved solutes in a solution. So if you look here, you've got a hypertonic solution, so you've got lots of pink molecules. And on the right, you've got fewer pink molecules, so it's a hypotonic solution. Now, you've also got these green particles or molecules. What are they? Well, they are insoluble molecules and they don't affect the osmotic concentration. So it's only soluble molecules that affect the osmotic concentration. So water molecules move down their concentration gradient. And the way that they move through a partially permeable membrane is through special channel proteins. So these special channel proteins will transport water, and in this case, they won't transport glucose. Okay, so which way will osmosis occur? Looking at this diagram, you've got a hypertonic solution and a hypotonic solution. Which way will net osmosis be? So watch the water molecules. They are moving from hypo to hyper. Okay, so the net movement of water will be from hypo to hyper. Okay, I've mentioned this word or these words water potential. What do they mean? So the water potential is the free kinetic energy of water molecules in a solution. And it's represented by this symbol here. It's measured in kilopascals, where one pascal is the pressure of one newton per meter squared. So what are the water potential values? Well, pure water has a water potential of zero kilopascals. So pure water is zero. And then if you add in any solute, it makes the water potential become more negative. So water is going to move from where there's less solute to more solute. So it's going to move from a high water potential to a low water potential. So high water potential will be zero. Low water potential will be a very negative number. So how do we understand water potential? Well, it's a little bit confusing, especially as the highest value is zero and all other values are negative. So the more negative the value of the water potential, the more solute there is. So it might be easier to think of water potential as an overdraft at a bank. The bigger the overdraft, the more negative is the amount of money that you have. And the smaller the overdraft, the less negative is the amount of money you have. So in this case, a high water potential is when it's zero kilopascals, and a low water potential is when there is a very negative value. So for example, minus 200 kilopascals. So water potential's got two components. You've got a solute potential and pressure potential. So we're going to have a look at each of these separately. So what is the solute potential? Well, the solute potential is a negative value. And the water potential of a solution is affected by the amount of solute it contains. So the greater the amount of solute, the more negative the water potential. So this reduces the water potential value. Why does it do this? Well, what it does is it reduces the number of free water molecules that can diffuse. So the contribution that solutes make to the water potential of a solution is 
the solute potential. And it's a negative value. So that, remember, solute potential is a negative value. Then you've got something called pressure potential. So if you look at this diagram, water is moving to the left by osmosis. If pressure is applied to the left, this will resist the entry of water. And this pressure is known as the pressure potential. And this is important in plants. So the pressure potential is given a positive value, except at the top of xylem where transpiration causes tension. So it's the hydrostatic pressure potential or mechanical pressure to which water in a liquid phase is subjected to. For example, turgid pressure, wall pressure, atmospheric pressure, transpiration pull. Okay, so pressure potential is positive, Water potential is a negative value. Solid potential is negative. So looking at this equation now, we know which is positive, which is negative. Why is water potential always negative? This is because the solute potential is negative. And then the pressure potential is a positive value. So water potential equals solute potential plus pressure potential. Okay, looking at this here, you got different solutions. Understanding, um, we've just discussed water potential, which way is the water going to move? You've got pure water, 0 kilopascals on the left, a dilute solution, minus 200 kilopascals, and then a concentrated solution, minus 500 kilopascals. Where is there a very negative value? So water moves from a high water potential to a low water potential. So it's going to move from pure water to a dilute solution to a concentrated solution. Okay. Right, in summary, what have we discussed in this lesson? Well, osmosis is the net movement of water molecules from a hypotonic solution, which has got a high water potential, to a hypertonic solution, which has got a low water potential, across a partially permeable membrane. What is hypertonic? hypotonic and isotonic mean? Well, hypertonic is when there's a high concentration of solute, hypotonic is when there's a low concentration of solute, and isotonic is when the concentration of solute and water is the same. And then what's the equation for water potential? And what is water potential? Well, water potential is the free kinetic energy of water molecules in a solution. So pure water has a water potential of zero kilopascals. And the more solute there is, the more negative the value. So the equation is water potential is equal to solute potential plus pressure potential. And remember that solute potential is always given a negative value. And that concludes our lesson, the end.